We've tracked the board games with the biggest gains in popularity, traffic, discussion, sales, and news this month, and have compiled the top 10 into this list of games with Momenten. Hey there, I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and our countdown kicks off with the upcoming network and route building game, Vivid Memories, in which players take turns collecting fragments of childhood memories, weaving a tapestry of colored threads within their minds. Every stick becomes a sword, every bike a steed, every memory a possibility, and every frontier an opportunity for exploration. Throughout their journey, players will store important moments in their memory banks, gaining new abilities that unlock additional scoring options as competitors cleverly create connections and accumulate compensation for completing core memories, matching the imagination behind each moment. Vivid Memories funded on Kickstarter in May and is currently scheduled for release in October, which to me, it does seem kind of like a somewhat ambitious turnaround time for a Kickstarter project. But this is the same team behind the Kickstarters for Sagrada, a holy festival of colors right over there, and a dozen other projects. So they do have the benefit of prior experience, making vivid memories one to keep in your memory banks until its release. And speaking of games that we are eagerly anticipating, brings us to this episode's first sponsor, The Crew Mission Deep Sea from Thames and Cosmos. This is the follow-up to the original cooperative trick-taking card game The Crew Quest for Planet Nine, winner of the 2020 Kenner Spiel des Jahres Award. Now, this edition takes you and your crew deep down into the ocean's abyss in search of the fabled sunken land of Mu. How close your team gets to discovery depends entirely on how well you work together. This is because, while communication will be critical to your crew's success, it's also going to be severely limited within your submerged state. Finding this land within the murky depths depends not only on winning tricks, but also on carefully negotiating the order in which they are won. So card by card, trick by trick, your search party will discover the challenges that lie ahead and forge their own path towards the sunken objective. But it's going to take nearly flawless execution and perhaps a little luck to finally reach the mysterious Moo. Follow the link in this video's description to find the Crew Mission Deep Sea when it finally surfaces at your friendly local game store in July. Next up is My Father's Work, which gained 29 points to join our list at number 9. In this upcoming horror-themed worker placement game, players find themselves competing against each other as mad scientists entrusted with a page from their father's journal. Now, the game is played over the course of three generations, between each of which all of their experiments, accomplishments, and resources are lost to time until their children discover and continue their work. But meanwhile, it's also inevitable that the local townsfolk, who are strictly anti-experiments against nature, will be riled up by all of this into forming an angry mob on your front lawn. Or the player's ethically dubious work may simply cause them to spiral into insanity. Good luck justifying that on your workers' comp claim. My workers, my workers' father, my father's work recently completed a successful Kickstarter campaign. So now the game's own bits and pieces are in the process of being stitched together in preparation of being shocked to life when it starts shipping the backers in spring 2022. At number eight is an upcoming re-implementation of 2012's Agents of Smirsh. This one being Agents of Smirth. Epic Edition. In this version of the game, one to four players once again take on the roles of elite government spies traveling the world in search of the quite unpleasant Dr. Lobo and his henchmen to stop them from taking over the world. But the Epic Edition is designed to focus on the story while also refreshing the graphic design and streamlining some of the game's mechanisms, all to provide a more focused, engaging experience. Uh, additionally, Dr. Hobo... <laughs> Alright, there's a typo in the script. <laughs> Additionally, Dr. Lobo and his horrible henchmen, don't combine all that together, now have their own individual choose-your-own-adventure-like stories and encounters. The player that defeats one or all of the henchmen first gains an advantage against Dr. Lobo during the end game, but players that fail to defeat any henchmen will instead be demoted to paperwork duty back at Smirsh headquarters, and their, their cars will be filled with disgruntled scorpions. 
Speaking as one who has mastered time travel, I know full well that the first human settlers will arrive on Mars in the year 2037. The same year that bickering about politics becomes an Olympic event. In On Mars, as chief astronaut for a Martian exploration enterprise, players will compete to pioneer the biggest, most advanced colony on the Red Planet by achieving the current mission goals as well as the private agendas of their own financial benefactors. And when the game begins, players will be dependent on supplies from Earth and will frequently have to travel between the Mars space station and the planet's surface. But as the colony expands over time, they'll shift their activities to construct mines, power generators, water extractors, greenhouses, oxygen factories, and shelters. But still, the goal of the game remains the same, to develop a self-sustaining colony independent of any terrestrial business organization, government, or book club. So tell me, do you have the strength to take on this challenge? And I mean that quite literally. I mean, this box is huge. It contains like eight pounds of content. Oh. Likewise though, if you enjoy these videos, a subscription to the channel would be a real demonstration of strength. Rising 44 points to resurface at number 6 this month is Forgotten Waters, a story-driven crossroads game set in a world of fantastical adventure. In it, players take on the role of pirates sailing together on a ship, attempting to further their own personal narratives as well as a common goal. The tales told in Forgotten Waters are designed to encourage players to explore and laugh together as they discover the game world together. Now, every choice can leave a lasting impact on the story, which features five scenarios and a massive location book that provides players with tons of choices, allowing them to leave no stone unturned, because you never know what you might find under there. You know, perhaps a piece of treasure, clue to solving a mystery, or maybe just another disgruntled scorpion. You never know what the tide's going to wash ashore in Forgotten Waters. Kemet, an award-winning area control game with a mythological bent from 2012, makes a triumphant return this summer with a new edition, Kemet Blood and Sand. The Kemet Blood and Sand features new artwork, several modifications to the gameplay, and rules that were redesigned to be, quote, more approachable. There was a quasi-official version 1.5 rule set that was adopted by the gaming community, but the designers say that this version goes far beyond what that had. Blood and Sand also features a redesigned map that features a twist, bigger and more detailed figurines, and a few other surprises. <laughs> I don't know what they are, so it's going to be a surprise to me as well. It also, coincidentally, features a giant disgruntled scorpion on its box, which I actually didn't realize until I got to this point writing the script. But I, <laughs> it works out nicely for the... The weird common theme we have going on for some reason. Now, between Kemet Blood and Sand, Agents of Smirsh, Epic Edition, and the upcoming Clash of Cultures Monumental Edition, there's quite a few board game reboots that are currently in the works, which raises this week's, month's, this episode's Quest 10. What do you think of how I'm doing? Great or super great? Also, what do you think of all of these board game revisions? If you own one of these titles, are you going to be refreshing your copy of the game with one of these new additions? Share your product purchasing plans with us down in the comments. And to give you time to ponder your answers, I'm going to share with you a word from the other sponsor that helped make this episode possible, Keepers of the Quest Star from Upper Deck. Keepers of the Quest Star is a new one versus one dungeon crawler set in a world of magic and mayhem where players can be both adventurers and cunning quest masters, designing scenarios full of menacing monsters like disgruntled scorpions and treacherous traps as they journey to discover the unrivaled treasure known as the Quest Star. Legend has it that mere mortal artisans cannot craft a curio that compares to the stunning beauty of the Quest Star. Perhaps. But, I don't know, have you ever considered you've just been working with underskilled artisans? And it's possible. And regardless, it's no wonder that competing parties of adventurers have made it their life's mission to locate and become the keeper of the Quest Star. And now is your chance to embark on this epic journey and claim the Quest Star for yourself. So watch out for the devious dangers that are lurking within the dungeons that you'll discover. Avoid these perilous pitfalls and become the next Keeper of the Quest Star by following the link in this video's description to find the game which is now available for you by going and getting it. That's how you can get it for you. 
Finding its way onto this month's countdown is Lost Empire's War for the New Sun, which gained 62 points to land at number 4. Lost Empires is a card-driven area control game with a focus on tactical movement and deck design. Each player chooses a faction to play, and using the cards available for that faction, constructs an 18-card deck with which to do merciless battle. What's more, helpful artifacts can be gained by controlling objectives and destroying elite enemy units augmented with alien technology. And after accumulating a collection of artifacts, they can be used to construct a worm gate, which wins that player the game. Lost Empires is currently gearing up for its second Kickstarter campaign. Its first one was prematurely cancelled by its publisher a week after it launched, so the game could be retooled based on the feedback that they received while it was running. A message posted by the publisher states, quote, After lengthy deliberation, we and the designers have decided to relaunch Lost Empire's War for the New Sun later this year. This experimentation has led to new ideas, including the possibility of a solo mode. But this is going to take a lot more development, which in turn will take a lot more time as we test things out to make sure everything's viable for Lost Empires. So it's going to be interesting to see what modifications actually end up being made for the game when its Kickstarter campaign relaunches later this year. And while we're still out in space, let's visit Stationfall, a Kickstarter campaign which climbed 63 points this month up to number 3 and earned the ever-elusive Chaz Backed It Badge. Yes, this game got my money. In Stationfall, a dozen characters, each with their own abilities, goals, and secret relationships, run rampant on a space station that's destined for incineration upon its inevitable re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Stationfall is designed to set the stage for players to develop creative solutions to their impending crises as the plot twists, morphs, and grows ever more dangerous over the course of the game. Players will need to not only survive long enough to accomplish their objectives, but also exploit tactical opportunities and deduce their opponent's identities and motives. This is all meant to be a messy, intricate fiasco that's full of dangerous variables, and I for one cannot wait to be take part in, in those fiascos. I'm This video so far has been a fiasco, and now I'm looking for this to be a fun fiasco, hopefully funner than recording this video has been, because mercy me, this one, this episode, has been a, has been a challenge. It's released at the end of this year. And speaking of eventful re-entries from outer space, the game Under Falling Skies breaks through the strategy game stratosphere by climbing 94 points to number 2. Under Falling Skies is a solo game with a multi-mission campaign. Each mission, players take charge of defending a city besieged by otherworldly invaders and perhaps disgruntled scorpions. Actions are powered by a dice placement mechanism in which choosing an action also selects which enemy ships will make the descent towards civilization. Bigger numbers give better effects to the player, but they also cause hostile forces to descend onto the city faster. And so, players will need to balance the actions they take along with expanding their underground base of operations in order to access more powerful actions while also researching and replenishing their own energy supply. The previous print run of Under Falling Skies is all but sold out, but in mid-May, the game's publisher, Czech Games Edition, announced that a restocking shipment was just about to arrive at their distribution centers, meaning that retail outlets could start receiving copies to restock their shelves in June, which it now is now. It is June. So if you've been looking for Under Falling Skies, well, you'll hopefully be able to find it again very soon. And now that we're back from space on solid ground and the Earth is safe, I think that you and I have earned a quick little vacation over to the Isle of Cats, which is the game that rose 107 points to top the list. The Isle of Cats is a competitive, medium-weight, card-drafting, polyomino, cat placement board game for one to four players in which the citizens of Squall's End must rescue as many cats as possible before the evil Lord Vesh arrives. What, you ask, does the evil Lord Vesh have against cats? I don't know. Perhaps he is allergic to them. What I do know is that is not important. 
All that matters is that I stick to the actual words in the script, and that each cat is represented by a unique tile that belongs to a specific family. Players must find a way to make all their cats fit on board their boat while keeping their flocks of feisty feline families in formation. And the collected cat clusters are about to get even larger with the game's Kittens and Beasts expansion, which is currently running on Kickstarter through Thursday, June 24th. The Kittens and Beasts expansion introduces three new modules that can be played in any combination with the standard game, as well as a lesson module and six family cards. Kittens offer an incentive for the fastest players, Beasts wish to befriend certain families of cats, and Events inject various new mechanisms into the gameplay. So if you enjoyed Isle of Cats, then the expansion's Kickstarter campaign is definitely worth checking out, right? Meow. And if you thought that pun was embarrassing, well, follow the link in this video's description to the Watch It Played Patreon page, where you will find another video where I really embarrass myself. Trust me, you will know it when you see it. And until next time, though, I've been Chaz Master C, and take care.